Like y'all shy. All right, let's see you, Mill. All right, Mill, you ready, Mill? Yes, sir. God bless you, and God bless all your congregation in here. So what's going on, Mill? You know, I'm reading the Bible. I'm trying to rebuke this brother for his lust demon, and you say that this is just an ignorance and waste of time? So first of all, I got an issue with you guys entertaining and letting this man blaspheme against the Lord. First of all, he's an elder. I get that, but there's no reason to entertain that. And on top of that, you guys are supposed to be holy men, you know, and even even uh, your priests be cursing online and stuff. And I'm trying to figure this out because y'all supposed to be holy men. Now, if you're for the most high God, all the Israelite stuff y'all talk about, I give y'all that. You know what I'm saying? I don't deny it because it makes sense. But all that other stuff y'all talking is crazy. Okay. Can he, can this man be forgiven for the blasphemy of the son? Of course. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do. You were just going to rebuke him and, and, and kick him down the street and curse him without trying to rebuke him because he can't be forgiven for blasphemy of the son. But I'm thinking about your title and I'm like, how do you even put up a title like that? Because that's exactly what he said verbatim. And you think with family, with family and children and women watching this stuff, you think that's proper for, for your audience being that is, is co-ed? Well, I, I preface and made a disclaimer in the beginning of the video that this is not going to be for younger children. So, yes. And if I if I was to read Obadiah 1 and 18, let me, say this real quick. let me say this real quick. If I was to read Obadiah 1 and 18, I want to know what's worse. This man saying Jesus is ugly and couldn't get no pussy or God himself saying he finna exterminate all the Edomites, which are the Caucasians today. What's worse? So that, that's a whole nother subject with the Edomite no, stuff. It, no, it doesn't matter who the Edomites are. God said he's going to exterminate a whole race of people. Is that what's worse? I mean, I would say a whole race of people. Exactly. So if I was to read Obadiah 1 and 18, would you say, Deacon, why are you reading this when there's kids watching you? The Bible got good, bad, and ugly in it. I and understand you think, that. Yeah, but still. You think God is all about love. For example, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Who created evil? Who created evil? The devil did. The devil created evil? That's right. You think God is all about love. For example, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Who created evil? Who created evil? The devil did. The devil created evil? That's right. Okay. Let me read you a scripture real quick. I already know what scripture you're going to read, that God created the good and the evil. Okay, I already know. So then why did you say it was the devil? Okay. So, but he's going back to when he's speaking about Satan, when he rebelled. Of course he created, if you look at it in that sense, he created evil because Satan became evil when he rebelled, when he was full of pride. Okay. That's Isaiah, what God 45, Isaiah 45 and 17, I formed the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Show me what book, chapter, verse that said the devil got full of pride and then rebelled against God. Where's that? In Isaiah. In, in Isaiah. Isaiah. Where, where in Isaiah? Said, give me a sec. When he said, when he said I five times. Yeah, we want to see where it says he rebelled against God. All right. Give me a is sec. Satan, is Satan the man? I came here to talk about something else. Okay, but I came. You're on here now, and I'm I'm here to put Christianity on blast. So is Satan the spirit or is Satan the man? Satan is both. He's spirit and flesh. Angels could become flesh, and because in Genesis six it stated that the, the the sons of God fell from heaven and made it with the women of the earth. So they're both. See, and that's Christianity. So angels can have sex. Oh, no, it's not Christianity. So what does it say in Genesis? What does it say in Genesis six? Um, you're, you're assuming you're assuming that when it says sons of God, it's talking about the angels. Are the Israelites called sons of God? They're called sons, sons of Israel. They're called children of Israel. They're called sons of God. They're called children of Israel. Nowhere in the Bible does God call anybody else a son except those angels that fell and Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm glad you said that. So find your scripture while you get corrected yet again. All right. Let me get my glasses. I don't know why I'm struggling. Okay. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be yeah. at the same as the Huh? Let Say that one more time. Let me read this real quick for you. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass and that in the place it was said unto them, ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, you are the sons of the living God. So do you stand correct? Okay, I'll agree with that, that one. No problem. Okay, so you are teaching Christianity because your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, said angels cannot have sex. That's not true because the angels, the angels made it with the women of the earth and Jesus Christ the pulled up that scripture where Jesus said that. Okay. Matthew 22 and 30 for in the resurrection. Let me, let me get there. Matthew, Hold on. Matthew 22 and 30. Matthew 
uh brother ariel israel the water for the super chat donation i see proud seat of joseph in the building all oh, praises the water y'all greatly appreciate the love um so i want to bring it down matthew, yeah matthew 22 and uh, 30 for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in a marriage but are as the angels of god in heaven so here is the lord and savior who you believe to be your lord and savior saying that angels can't have sex they can't marry so what the hell is Christianity talking about when they talk about fallen angels having sex with? So fallen angels have semen and sperm. First of all, you flipping, you flipping the script on that because the Lord is talking about the resurrection when when He comes for His people when 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 uh, the last day comes during the revelation times when He separates the wheat from the tares. That's what He's talking about the resurrection for those those who are in Christ for those who are in Yeshua Hamashiach. Okay, those are the ones that will not be given to marriage or anything else. That's what he's talking about. That has, first of all, that has nothing to do with the angels because he's talking about holy angels versus angels that rebel. It's a whole Where different topic. That? You inserted that and superimposed no, that. I'm not, I'm not inserting that. Does the text say that? Okay, you're you're adding your you're, you're adding your comment on it, and I'm telling you that you're perceiving that the wrong way because he's talking about the resurrection. He's talking okay. about. So when he comes back, nobody's gonna, when he comes back and establishes his kingdom in the kingdom of heaven, nobody, nobody's going to be marrying. That's correct. No one's going to be marrying. Okay. Now let me get you again, <laughs> man. What, what church do you go to? doesn't matter. You're going to hate me either way. So I don't know. I don't hate you. Are you a so-called Negro man? I'm a Hispanic man. Okay. So you're a Latino. Are you a Latino from uh, patrilineally? Like by your father's side? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I love you, brother. Just repent coming out of that white supremacist cult known as Christianity. It's not a white supremacist cult because Christians are named after Christ, Nazarene. I, said, I didn't say Christian. I said Christianity. You What's still believe you, the Christianity teaches Jesus uh, was born on December 25th. Christianity teaches fallen angels. I mean, angels have semen. Christianity teaches there was a war in heaven, but we see Satan in heaven, in Job, and in Kings. There's no war there. We see. Uh, them talking about a virgin birth. We see them talking about God's laws done away with. It's not a works-based salvation. So you guys don't believe in the you guys don't believe in the in the birth in the virgin birth, but yet Matthew 1 25 speaks clearly that that Joseph didn't know his wife to after the birth of Christ. Yeah, and it says in the old testament that uh I believe it was Judah that his wife got pregnant and he didn't know and he didn't know her again until after the birth. That is customary for his key word though again he didn't know but her another thing, another thing you guys say is the laws done away with it's not a works-based salvation. All you have to do is believe in white, blue eyed blonde hair Jesus, and you can be a homosexual. That's not true. Okay, so, no. so let me read this real quick. Let me read this real quick because I don't want to get off hand. You still got to go to Isaiah 14 and prove all things. Matthew 19, 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye all shall, shall, shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Now watch this, because he said ain't gonna be no marriages in the kingdom. They all gonna be damn It's a marriage between it's a it's a it's a marriage between Christ, his bride. Let, let me finish reading. And everyone I'm talking about a can I read God's word? Thank you. Yes, sir. And yes, everyone sir. that hath forsaken houses or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, I'm gonna say that again, brother male, wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. Why you, why, you, why are you receiving all these wives if you ain't gonna be marrying in the kingdom? Everything a hundredfold that you lost. This is in the kingdom, first kingdom of, competition. Break first of all, down. If you really want to go there, you know that the Lord doesn't allow polygamy. First of all, you go to Deuteronomy 17, 17. Everything a hundredfold that you lost. This is in the first of, kingdom of competition. Break first of all, if you really want to go there, you know that the Lord doesn't allow polygamy. First of all, you go to Deuteronomy 17, 17. The Lord specifically told y'all that y'all can't have more than one wife. But you guys did it any you guys did it anyway, and that was fine in the Lord's eyes because there were more fish to, to, to tackle. So okay. it, it didn't become a commandment or a requirement. Okay. However, now, now you said, all right, so let me ask you something. Go ahead, go ahead. Wait, you, you, have, better be, you better be pertaining to what you just said, because you're about to get. Do you story. have you have one mother, or do you have a hundred mothers? Because you got to make sense of that one, because everyone only has one mother. So watch this, watch this. But you're not let me finish. You're dealing with a Hebraic scholar here, and Matthew. It's not, it's, it's not about intelligence, my friend. Let the word be right, and let every man be a liar. That is true. There is no word in Hebrew for grandmother, so your grandmother, from a Hebraic perspective, would be another mother to you there is no hebrew word for grandfather so your grandfather will be another father to you so if you're an israelite and you're married you have your mother you have 
her mother and her mothers. Those are multiple mothers. Same with your fathers. And if you're married, your in-laws will be your father's father's fathers and mother's mother's mother. So you would have multiple mothers and fathers from a Hebrew perspective. Can so you grandfathers and grandmothers are referred in a plural sense. Yes, fathers, mothers, and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree with that. But yeah, exactly. you also you also you also can't say that uh, one man is going to inherit a hundred wives in the kingdom of God when God when Jesus specifically. Yeshua HaMashiach specifically said that there, there would be no marriage in there, that we would become okay. like the angels. Now watch this, because you don't understand that scripture. But first, you I do understand. God does not allow marriage to uh, multiple wives. This is Deuteronomy 21 and 15. If a man has, what does it say? If a man has what? Two wives. What does that mean? Is that one or two? That's a plural, obviously. Okay, so why is God giving holy laws on how to govern your wives if polygamy is prohibited? Because he's not talking to one person. He's talking to a whole people. So he's talking to more than one man, obviously, i.e. more than one wife. They would be they would be wives. OK, now you mentioned Deuteronomy 17 and 17. Is it a sin to have multiple two? Is it a sin to have two horses? <laughs> You're comparing a woman to a horse. No, I'm just asking you, is it a sin to have two horses? No, sir. OK, Deuteronomy 17 and 16. But he shall not multiply horses to himself. This is talking about the king who's over Israel. Verse 15, the king who's over Israel. He can't multiply horses. So is it a sin for Israelite king to have two horses? No, sir. No. Okay. Neither multiply wives to himself. Same phraseology. Is it okay. a sin for, for the king to have two wives? It says if, if it says you can't multiply wives, I would think that a plural means more than one. Okay. So you would have to keep that same energy in, in for uh, multiplying horses then. So a king can't have two horses. How you gonna how you gonna apply God's word to a horse to a woman? I don't understand the distinguishment because they're two different. A woman is a man and it's you regarded. Understand. You know why you don't understand? Because you know the Bible says the wicked won't understand. It's not oh, so I'm wicked. wicked. So I'm wicked. Wrong, wicked. I am. Well, what makes me wicked, sir? Do you keep God's laws, statutes, and commandments? In my heart, I do, because it says in Hebrews that we should keep them. <laughs> the Bible right? says your heart is the, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. You, so in your heart you do? Yes, it says in Hebrews that we ought to keep the, the statutes and the law and the testimonies in our hearts and in our minds. Yes, okay. that's Remember that's for the new tablets. That's Jeremiah what the new 19 and 9 says. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So you you're basing your emotions and your actions off of your heart. You're th thus proving with the Bible that you are wicked. It's in the Bible. How are you going to say I'm wicked? Then if then if I'm wicked, then the, then the word is wicked. That's what you're saying. So let's 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 go back to where we started. I don't want to because we could talk about all these topics, but I'm not letting you run from the fact that you said that there was some war in heaven. And it's in Isaiah 14. Did you find that where Satan rebelled? <laughs> No, because we were talking about other things. So give me a sec. That's if you want to give me that respect. Yeah, I'll give you a second if you can multitask here, because I don't want to let you run away from. I do. I did with something called a linear logic. So that means we. Want I don't to run from nobody. Back. Okay, that's cool. I don't so run from nobody. You mentioned that we curse, right? What is the definition of a Buddy. curse according to the Bible? So, can you hear me? And I'd be a scholar, but. I'm All right, there you are, Mel. You hear me now? Yes, sir. All right, so uh, we were in um, Isaiah, Isaiah 14, 12. Yeah, let me pull that up real quick. Let me pull that up. It's like I said, man, God bless all your, your congregation. Like, you know, us true yeah, Christians. Can... Go ahead, go ahead. Us true Christians don't have no issues with you. And no, I don't believe in Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween, 4th of July, or any other blasphemous festival. So. Mm -hmm. So, so who are the, who are the ethnic Jews of the Bible? Who are the ethnic Israelites today? Rephrase your question, because are you who talking are about? The Israelites that were with Moses during the Exodus in Egypt, the Israelites that existed during the time of Jesus Christ, who are they today and where are they? So evidently they were scattered right to the four parts of the uh, to the earth. OK, that's what the Bible says. OK, so can they still can they be identified or because the Bible says they was going to rise up to their feet after losing their identity and be a great and exceeding army in Ezekiel 37? Only the Lord could identify them because uh, lineage has been watered down. So whether so you're Hispanic. The the who are the people in the land of Jerusalem? Who are the people in Israel today? Well, evidently the uh, 
Um, some some could be from the lineage, but um, I would say mostly uh, uh, Yiddish uh, type of um, Germanic type of uh, Jews. So it's mostly Gentiles. But if you if you use Gentile in the firm in the in the form of other than Jew, true I mean, Jew, then non yeah. Israelite. Non Israelites. I would say most in most parts, yeah. Okay. So the people over there are non Israelites. The people want to know why no, you're I'm wearing not... the people want okay, to know well, why I... you're wearing masks in the house. I got injured on the job, that's why. Okay, okay, cool. So let's go to Isaiah 14 and then um uh, I want to, let's talk about something more important. Like, um, I want to, I want to close out soon. I want to, I want to just have a quick back and forth on salvation. How do you obtain it? What is it? And who gets it? But you mentioned that Satan had a fight. Him and God was throwing down. They was throwing hands. Where's that in Isaiah 14? So they, first of all, you can't throw hands with God. God, God, according to Jesus Christ was struck down like a bolt of lightning out of heaven. Okay. Okay, so there was no fight with God. There is no such thing. I see you're taking things so uh, so hyper literal. Um, so let's just start with the context. Isaiah 14. Do you believe all of Isaiah 14 has been fulfilled already, or? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So let's start at verse one. Isaiah 14 and one. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel, and will set them in their own land, and strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So. This happened when, where both kingdoms, northern kingdom and southern kingdom, went back into the land. Prophecy probably isn't your strong point, huh? The Old Testament, but no, that um, I would say so. Yeah, when the Do northern you know when this would have happened after after what after the northern and the southern kingdom split. Okay. Um, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the Lord in the, in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. So, uh, both kingdoms, northern kingdom and southern kingdom, went back into the land of Israel and had and took the people slaves whose slaves they were. No, I'm not saying that. That's what this says, though. Okay, but you have to understand. I mean, you're going you're going to an Old Testament text, and I get that. But ultimately, you have to point to the cross because it's the finished works of Christ on the cross, crucified for us, for our sins. Okay, okay. so, yeah, I agree with that text in the sense that um, after the northern and the southern kingdom was split, but it still has nothing to do. Lineage has really nothing to do with salvation. It's a, it's, you got to understand that even Korah, when he went against Moses in that time, being a Levi, because Korah was also a Levi, Korah was put to death, him and 250 others. Okay, so lineage has nothing to do whether I'm an Israelite, you're an Israelite, we're all Israelites. You got to understand that there's only one that we receive salvation through. And Jesus Christ said that in order to get to the Father, you have to first go through him. That's the only way to heaven. Okay. So salvation doesn't have anything to do with lineage. Okay, so if that's the case, why does Isaiah 45 and 17 say, but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Do you agree with the text? I agree with anything the Bible says, yes, sir. Okay, so you agree that the Bible says that the Israelites are the ones getting the everlasting salvation? Yeah, they're going to get the everlasting salvation through Christ. But I thought you said it's not about ethnicity. What does Deuteronomy 20, 20, 29, 29 say about the scripture? Does not God says we're going to know some things in this for, for, some things for us to know and some things for him to kept, be kept secret. Doesn't it say that? Yeah, but it says in the end times, knowledge will be increased. So he is going to start revealing in this dispensation. Okay, so I know you guys think that we, we crutch on Paul, but even when we don't crutch on Paul, you guys start using Paul's uh, passages in Romans and Acts. And yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Like let's, go, let's go to Paul. But I want to read okay. this. You made a powerful statement and said salvation has nothing to do with ethnicity. So I want to read Daniel 2 and 24. It says, okay. and, in these, and in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break and, and consume yeah. all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. So why is the mouth of God saying 
that the kingdom won't be left to other people, but they are going to break in pieces all the other kingdoms. Are you prepared? Are you ready to do that? Is that what they teach at your church? That you guys are the kingdom that are going to destroy every other kingdom? First of all, we don't talk about destroying because Jesus Christ, in Matthew 5, 43, says for us to conduct ourselves accordingly, according to how he wants us to conduct ourselves. But to well, touch there me, people here that are going to be destroying all these other kingdoms. You're talking about in past times. Yeah, no, when it came. Is, no, this is this says that in the days of these kings, and in the last ruling kingdom, the God of heaven is going to set up a kingdom. This is God's head. This is the kingdom of God, which shall never be destroyed. That's Jesus and Christ's kingdom. kingdom. That's Jesus okay, Christ's kingdom. That kingdom and that kingdom shall not be left to other people. Do you agree that that's that's about that text is about Jesus Christ? This is the the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Jesus Christ, absolutely. But it's saying it's only for the Israelites, and they are going to break in pieces the rest of the kingdoms. Is that what you want to do? Is that what I want to do about what? Do you want to break these other these kingdoms who oppress you into pieces? I don't get oppressed because guess what? In the last days, Jesus said himself to John. He said, "We're going to be persecuted. We're going to be murdered. We're going to be killed." We're going to be put in jail. You're not oppressed. What do you mean you're not oppressed? Even if you're oppressed for Jesus' name, you're oppressed still. I know that. No, I'm agreeing with you on that. We are oppressed, but we are also free. We are oppressed in this world, but our spirit is not oppressed. We can be locked up. We can be anywhere and be free in Christ. So did not Jesus Christ say that, or Yeshua Hamashiach say, the servant is not higher than his master. So whatever the master goes through, evidently the servants are going to go through as well. Is that not true? Absolutely, that's true. But that's not true for Christianity. Christianity is the ones who created the doctrine of discovery, went around the world and stole everybody's land and put them in slavery. What the hell are they doing? What are you talking about? Because you're trying to distinguish. All right. Before I touch on that, go to Romans 11, verse 19. OK, I'm going to go there. Let me go there in order, though, because you brought up um, ethnicity. So I just want to make sure we cover that. Uh, but Matthew, there is Matthew, we, huh? Matthew 15. See, here's what I'm going to do. When you bring out a scripture, I'm going to thoroughly break it down to the way I understand it. And when I bring out a scripture, I'd like for you to do the same, not just run to another scripture. So in Matthew 15, Jesus Christ, this is the mouth of his words. He says in verse 24, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why is Jesus Christ saying he's only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? To fulfill the covenant, to fulfill the new covenant, the old covenant, so that he can bring in a new one. Okay, so let me ask you this. Who was Jesus Christ sent to? He was sent to the lost sheep, as it says in scripture. As the Israelites. So just for the record, Jesus Christ was not sent to any other people, correct? At that time, no, sir. Well, what time was he sent to? Because he went back up to the Father and he's sitting at the right hand until the day of judgment. Okay, so if you look at Mark 3, verses 8, where you see Idumea, Idumea... <laughs> Excuse me. I do may have been the Edomites. It says in Mark three verses eight that he healed even the Edomites. So answer that one. Why would why would Jesus Christ heal or Yeshua Hamashiach heal an Edomite if they were not to receive salvation later on? Wouldn't he say, get away from me, Edomite? Got you. That's easy. So in light of this scripture, that means he didn't only come for the Israelites. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Yeah. Eventually, because go ahead. This, go ahead. Is, after Mark, this is after Mark three. So you're saying that. He started off going to other people. Then in Matthew 15, he said, I'm only for the Israelites. He did say that. He was referencing the, the Syrophoenician women that um, he shouldn't give the bread of the children to the dogs. But she said even the, the little dogs eat off or rather under the master's table. And what did, he do, what, what did he do then? What did he do right. with that little girl that was demonized? Yeah, well, let's go through the context. And I want to get Mark 3 because you added something in there. You added to the word and you know what the Bible says about that. I'm not adding that. You did. Watch. Matthew 15 and 24. Just answer me clearly. Is Jesus Christ only sent to Israelites? Like he I've said, heard. or is he lying? Or is he sent to Edomites too, like you said? First of all, let every man be a liar and God be true. And so I answered that already. He came for the Israelites at that time, but he also set it up so that he can teach his disciples that healing, him healing a Canaanite woman's daughter, evidently he was preparing their hardened hearts that they will have to go out, as it says in Matthew 28, 18 to 20, to preach the gospel into okay. all the world. So that's, okay. that was, so did I answer your question? No, you didn't, but it's okay. I'm not going to uh, pigeonhole you into answering. Yes, it yes, that, that verse, yes, for the Israelites. Uh, so he only, out of his mouth, he only came to the Israelites, but our brother Mel is saying he came for the Edomites too. So Jesus Christ is a liar. Uh, verse 26, but he you're, you're said, it is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. So who are the children here? The Israelites. And who are the dogs? The Canaanites. 
the Canaanites or all the heathens? No, no, no. That was a Canaanite woman. He was specifically talking to that Canaanite woman. And you so got to remember that the only the Canaanites are dogs. She was the only one there that was a Canaanite. Yes, sir. So he was referencing her. I'll what? let you know. That. Not... Do you consider yourself a Christian scholar or a Christian theologian? Christian theologian? No. Okay, well, all the but masters I... of your masters, all the masters of your religion are going to say that the dogs represent all the heathens and the Israelites would break it down like that. This is just Hebraically how it is. It calls Gentiles dogs. Okay, what are Gentiles though? Not other than Jew. These are pagan people that don't that don't believe in God. These are pagans that worship other gods. Oh, wait a second. But she believed in him and she still called a dog. Okay, but why do you think he called her a dog? I'm trying to break it down for you too, but you're not letting me you're not letting me talk. Brother, so, you just said only the Canaanites were dogs. I'm I didn't say that. I said he he's referring to her because she is a Canaanite woman. So okay. yes, the heathen, the heathens obviously are dogs, but there was only a Canaanite woman there. So he's okay. referencing. There we go. There we go. Okay, thank you, thank you. We agree. So okay. is a dog equal to the to a human? No, just like a horse is not equal to a wife. Okay, so are Gentiles equal to Israelites? Yes or no? Heathens? No. Okay. Heathens, Gentiles. She's not a heathen. You're saying a heathen is a pagan, but she believes. Yes, but she believes on the Messiah. Look at verse 22. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried on him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She believes. So why is she still being called a dog? Okay, she believed. First of all, I told you, I made the example. He was making an example. He was testing her and also making an example to uh, the Israelites that were in the room, which was his 12 disciples. So she uh, came. Yeah. Oh, so hold he, on. Was using, he was using some type of deception. Uh, no, I didn't say that. You're saying that. If, Can I, I, if he's just testing her, how is that not deception? He's calling, he's telling her to go away. He's ignoring her. And then he calls her a dog. Then he says she only gets a crumb. Is a crumb equal to a loaf? No, sir. Okay. So, do, and this is a believing Gentile. Is a believing Gentile equal to Israelites according to this context? So how many, how many people nowadays never knew God and hated God on their dying bed start to speak to God and start to ask for healing? So that's, that's the point I'm trying to That's not my question. A blessing is not equivocal to salvation or hierarchy. Mm -hmm. So I'm asking you again, if you agree that a loaf, a crumb is not equal to a loaf, a dog is not equal to a human, are the Gentiles that believe or disbelieve equal to Israelites? The ones that disbelieve. That's why I was taking you to Romans 11 uh, to talk about the broken branches. And okay. the, and the, uh -huh. okay, so let's go to Mark 3, because you said that Jesus healed Mark, an Edomite. Mark 3, 8. Because he said Jesus healed an Edomite. Mark he 3, 8. It. All right. Mark 3 and 8. Now watch this. Uh, let's let's go to uh, verse seven. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him, and from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Idumea, and from beyond the Jordan, and they about of Tyre and Zidon, a great multitude. When they had heard what great things he did, came to him. Why are you inserting that these are Edomites? Does it say they're Edomites, or does it say they were? There's a people coming from these places. It says Idumea clearly there. Yeah, but. Does, does that mean Edomites? That's what you refer to as Edomites, Idumeans, right? That means Edom. It doesn't say Idumean. It says Idumea. Idumea. Means, yeah, Idumea. That means these are people coming from these locations. Okay. Not, so they Edomites. You said. All right. So why then? Then why then? Christ is giving the or Mark is giving the description of different peoples coming from different places like Tyre, Sidon, and he's also referring to Idumea and Jerusalem. Why, why? Why the separation then? Because the Israelites were scattered in the neighboring cities of Jerusalem. Read Acts chapter two. They're coming from all these locations to keep the, Pente the Pentecost devout Jews from every nation. You, you don't have you don't you don't you don't have no proof of that though. That that text particularly says that they weren't Edomites. Well, you don't have any proof saying that they were Edomites. But what we do have is Matthew fifteen. Either Christ is a liar or he's not. He said that he only came for the Israelites. Okay. So who has more evidence to to, to back their stance up? So that's the same thing he said to the Pharisees when he was healing the man on the Sabbath. They were more they were more concerned with the law. And what he did, and he told him he was son of this, he was Lord of the Sabbath, and he healed the man anyway, and they wanted to kill him. So what it's the same thing. What does him healing on the Sabbath have to do with you lying and saying those were Edomites and Mark? I'm not lying. That, what, what is Idumeans then? What is Idumea? Where do where, where do where, where do where do Puerto Ricans live? They live in Puerto Rico, right? Some are there are there, are there non-Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico? Yes, or yes no? sir. Okay, yes, sir. You're, you're cut. Now, my last one, then I'll go to Romans eleven for you. Romans nine and four. Who are Israelites? So I'm going to ask you this. Who is the adoption for, according to Paul? He's talking about the Israelites. 
Okay, so the adoptions for the Israelites. Can, is the adoption for anybody else? Yes. Then why is saying that it belongs? The word pertain means belong to. Why is Paul saying it belongs to the Israelites? Okay, so then explain Matthew 20, explain 28, Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Because the word, the word, the word world in Hebrew means olam. It means earth. I got you. We're going to pull that up. But I want to finish this. You see how much I'm moving with integrity? I want to pull up every scripture that you have so, so it doesn't seem like I'm trying to dominate or not. This is not you. about pride for me, man. You know, I'm just, you know, but, I love the Lord. I love Christ. I follow him. This ain't about winning or losing, man, or cutting or, or defeat. This is about everyone learning about who Christ is and what he did for us. I hope you rewatch this and take notes yourself, brother. Now, back in Romans 9, in the glory and the covenants, can you be saying- Matthew 28. I can't, I can't hear you. Mic check, mic check. Got gotcha. you. Now I can hear you. Hold on one second. One second. Esau, do you have any questions pertaining to the Bible? Yeah. What's your question? So, Jacob and Esau, to you, what does that mean? Two twins. Two twins, right. So do you know where this story originally came from? Uh, it came from Mesopotamia. It came from Mesopotamia. Show me the text that proves that. It, it's in the Sumerian tablets. Okay, well, so, give, me, give me the quote. Give me the book, chapter, verse for it. It's Inki and Enlil. Inki and Enlil. Okay, and one came out red and one came out black? Enlil tried to kill humanity in the flood, and his brother saved one loyal. I don't have time for non-Bible believers. Can you hear me, Mel? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so let, let's, let's, I want to go to Matthew 28, but I want to close out this Romans 9 and 4 real quick. Um, so you agree it, that Paul is saying. You didn't even let me finish. You said what? You didn't even let me finish. What did you want to finish? Okay, you didn't go to, to uh, Romans 11. And, yeah, uh, I got it. Look at, look at the top of my screen. I got Matthew 28 here and Romans 11 here. I just wanted to conclude okay. Romans 9 and 4. So you agree okay. that um, that the Israelites are whom pertain, which means belong the adoption and the glory and the covenants. And my question was, is can you be saved without being in the new covenant? The only way they can do that is through a new circumcision through Christ. And that was made known to Nicodemus when Jesus explained the only way to heaven. He says you have to be uh, baptized by water and spirit. And that new covenant comes through him. Okay, so why is Paul saying, so the death of Jesus Christ was to bring in the new covenant, correct? That's correct. That's correct. So why is Paul saying the new covenant is only for the Israelites? Where do you see that at? Romans 9 and 4. I'm pretending at the adoption of glory, the covenant is given to the will of the service of God and the promise of the Holy Okay, so... Yeah. What's so your point? Know, my yeah, point they all. If you're a Gentile, a non-Israelite, the new covenant is not for you. Therefore, the death of Christ is not for you. Okay. So who who are the who are the who are the wild olive branches and and the olive branches? Because evidently they're not the same tree. Okay. So are you are you conceding on this and we're moving on this particular point? We're going to Romans yeah. eleven. If it's in Scripture, then it's true. Okay. So now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to reconcile your worldview of thinking everyone, even a non-Israelite, can be a part of the covenant. But Paul, which is the God of Christianity, I'm, I'm not going to say your God, but he's the God of Christianity. He's over Christ, uh, all the Christians. No um, one's over Christ except the Father. Well, I, I agree with you, but Christianity, they believe that Paul is over the Father and Christ. Not all so, Christians. Like, I agree. Not all Christians, but most do. So what you're going to have to do when we conclude this conversation, you're going to have to go and, and, and figure out is the Christian doctrine true or is the Bible true? Is the trans is the transcript driving the doctrine or is the doctrine driving the transcript? That's what you're going to have to figure out. So uh, let's go to Romans 11. I think you said Romans 11, right? That's correct. Let's pull up Romans 11. And then I want to pull up yes, Matthew sir. 28, which is the Great Commission. And um, so let's, let's since, since Romans 11 is kind of like a whole chapter, let me just answer Matthew 28 real quick, and then we go right to Romans 11. So Matthew 28 is also called the Great Commission, right? Yes, sir. It says, uh, Matthew 28, 19, and he said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world, right? So you're asserting that when he says teach all nations, he means go to all nations and... Um, 
convert them into um, Christians. And so what we believe that's talking about is go to all nations and gather the Israelites because it was prophesied and by the curses, they would be gathered to all nations. Now, if I can just give a demonstration um, in Acts 11, in Acts 11, they went to all nations and they didn't teach the Gentiles in those all nations. They only taught the Israelites. So if they were there when Christ gave this great commission, why didn't they go to all nations and teach the Gentiles, the, the actual Gentiles? Acts, Acts, okay. 11, Acts 11 and 19, look at this. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Finnis and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Can you explain to me why they didn't take Matthew 28 like you're interpreting it? Because this is literally saying they're in all nations teaching the Jews only. Okay, well, it's the same thing. You can ask, why did he tell King Agrippa in Acts uh, 26, 28? He says, not only um, I wish you would convert, but all else who hears this word. And, and King Agrippa was uh, an Edomite. Yeah, I understand that, but that's not my question. That's a, whole different, okay. that's a whole different point. He didn't go to Agrippa to teach him. He was locked up in, in chains, and Agrippa came I to him on a council. That, that's, that's, that has nothing to do with Matthew 28. So I want to be clear. Matthew 28 says, go to all nations and teach the word and none but the Jews only. But these disciples, they were going to all nations. I'm sorry. Matthew 28 says, go teach all nations. Mm -hmm. The disciples, they're going to all nations and teaching the Jews only. What do we do okay. with that? So is, so is Israel all nations or one nation? Israel is one nation that are in all nations. Okay, where do you get people, uh, one ethnic group of people that is scattered into all nations? And all nations. All right. See, you're 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 overreading or overemphasizing that text because all nations means the earth, and it it doesn't it doesn't say scattered. It says go into all nations. He didn't say go into the scattered nations. So no, actually, if you would have. I just demonstrated the disciples hearing the Great Commission and going and teaching none but to the Jews only. Let me give you another example. James, the Lord's brother. Let's see if he went to all nations to teach Gentiles or did he go to all nations to the 12 tribes scattered? James, one James, one. James specifically went to the 12 tribes. He specifically okay. went to the 12 tribes. Okay, so, so is he disobeying the Great Commission of Jesus Christ? Not at all. But he has to he has to teach them as well that they have to be recircumcised in the spirit, not only in the flesh. It has nothing to do with a physical... Uh, 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 circumcision anymore. It's in the spirit. It's in the mind. It's okay. in the heart. Let, let's go to Romans 11. Okay. And then, I'll, and then tell me which verse did you want? Because the Israelites, if, if you're hinging on Israelites being called Gentiles, I'm sorry, the Gentiles being getting drafted in, we believe that the Israelites, in, in certain, depending on the context, the Israelites are called by the names of Gentile nations. For so example, then you, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's your show. I'm not trying to. Mm -hmm. No, you're good. You're good. I'll, I'll, I'll allow you adequate time to respond or ask questions to me. For example, though, are the Romans, the Romans are Gentiles, right? Not, not all the Romans, no. But, okay, so an Israelite can be called a Gentile. Okay, we all know that Paul was a Roman. Okay, so. Because he said he had citizenship. It didn't mean that he was. Yeah, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying the Romans are Gentiles and Paul is called a Roman. So that means Israelites, depending on where they live or the customs they follow, they can be called after those Gentile nations and those Gentile names. If they're following after their after their gods or after their beliefs, yes. Yeah, or even if they're yeah. citizens, like you said. Well, not except Paul. Paul can't be considered a Gentile. I'm saying, but he, he is called a Gentile, though. Why would he be called a Gentile if he's a Benjamite? Is he called a Roman? Yes. Or a Roman is Gentile. Okay, if you're a citizen of a place, doesn't mean that 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 you're that place. I mean, you get what I'm saying. You could be, you could, you could be good. No, that, I'm not saying. Of course, he's not ethnically a Gentile. I'm saying the Bible says we will be called by the names of the Gentile nations because we will be scattered there and or following their customs. Okay, some will, yes, sir. Those that were scattered, yes. Okay, so when you go to Isaiah, I'm sorry, Romans 11. And you see the word Gentile, a lot of Christians automatically think that that's talking about non-Israelites. So the wild olive branches are talking about Israelite foreigners who have been either cut off or following other cultures and customs or being called Gentile nations. And they, okay, have, to so, be, they have to be woken back up. Go ahead. OK, so then you would be calling Paul a liar because if he was locked up with King Agrippa and he told King Agrippa that he could be saved and King Agrippa said, you almost persuade me to be a Christian. 
then uh, what, what do you, how do you explain that? If, if he was an Edomite and there was no salvation for Gentiles, why would he suggest that to King Agrippa? Well, I'll tell you one thing. If, if Paul was actually extending salvation to him, then Paul is contradicting himself, as we read in Romans 9 and 4, and you said you would agree that Paul said that the adoption, the covenant, the death of Christ, the new covenant salvation, the law, the promises, and the spirit of God is all for the Israelites. So the reason why Paul, and then in Acts 26, he didn't say, you won't see the word salvation there. He said, you almost got me to be a Christian. Is every Christian going to be saved? You're, 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 evade, you're evading, you're evading what, so I, what I, I asked. Question. I'm answering your question. What the you're question? Is every Christian going to be saved? Yes or no? Not every, not, not a false Christian, no. Okay, so every Christian not going to be saved who professes to be a Christian. And so the reason why Paul said that, and he'll show you in his other writings, is that he was in a situation where he had to get free of those bonds. You're dealing with the same people that beheaded um, uh, John the Baptist. So you have to be careful in those situations. So we believe Paul fin finessed his way out of the situation. As he even said that you could use pretense and you could use guile. Is it okay to use guile? No. Okay, well, then why did caught you with guile? This is 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 12 and 16. Look what Paul says. But be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you with guile. So is it okay for Paul to use guile? He says... I caught you with guile. He speak, he's speaking, he's speaking to someone there. He says, nevertheless, being crafty, I caught you. He caught him in trickery. Not that no, Paul was caught in trickery. No, he's saying he caught them, meaning right. he, he brought them in through craftiness. Look at what he says. Nevertheless, being crafty. He was the one being crafty. He caught them with guile. All right. So no, I don't agree. I don't agree with what that text means. So I mean, we agree to disagree. I'm not going to agree with you on everything, but I don't well, think that's what that. Let's look at the look at this word pretense. Pretense means an attempt to make something that is not the case appear true. What does that look sound word, like? Look up the word crafty, and get a synonymous word for that. Yeah, I understand that, but I listen. Paul said he used God when he was crafty. I'm with it. That's what it says. Another place he says, but he, he didn't. Go ahead. He didn't use that with King Agrippa. He he was being sincere. He said, "You and everyone else who would hear this gospel." He was being How sincere. He being sincere. And first of all, let's say he was because, being he, because the text the text. Let's go to Acts twenty six. Acts twenty six twenty eight. All right. Let's go to Acts twenty six and twenty eight. And he says, "Then Agrippa said to him, almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian.'" And Paul said, "I would to God, meaning he wishes, he wishes." That not only thou, but all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except in these bonds. What does it say? What does it say that he wishes that they became Christian? He told he told King Agrippa that. He said, Then King Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou almost persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, not only thou, thou means you, correct? Yeah. Okay, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. That in other words, yeah. In these chains. Okay, so where did he say, I wish that you guys can be Christians? I just read you the text. No, in verse 29, where is going, the Well, I'm going off of verse 28. Then King Agrippa, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, this is Paul's response, right? There's two people talking, it's a dialogue. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, right, thou, but also all that hear me this day. I mean, that's pretty clear. Why, why, do we, why do we need to flip that? No, this is what I'm asking, King. I'm saying in verse 29, where did Paul say, I wish you guys can be Christians? Is okay. the word Christian in verse 29, yes or no? No, it's in verse 28. He's responding okay. He's responding to verse 28. Come on, man. Exactly. You, you, can't have your way. you can't have it your way all the time. That's not how that works. We got to go. I'm not. I'll, I'll, let's say you're right. Let's say he wished they were Christian. Paul could wish whatever he want. Do you believe that all the Israelites are going to be saved? No, sir. Okay, Paul wished that all the Israelites are going to be saved. So just because he, let's say he did wish that, just because he wished something don't mean it's going to happen, brother. That means, that means, that means, that means, stand. that means that when Paul spoke, okay, Christ ordained him, Christ chose him. So everywhere Paul went, Christ was with him. So if, if Paul said it and it's written in the Bible and it was allowed to be there, then that means that if, if Agrippa would have converted, it would have been honored, just like Nicodemus. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So everything Paul said is 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 of Christ is what you're saying. Yes. 
Okay, then why in Acts 22, Christ's brother had to rebuke him for going off on certain things? Talking about Peter? No, James had to rebuke Paul for going off. If you're saying everything he did and said was right, why, why is James, the Lord's brother, rebuking him in Acts 21? Okay, so anytime anybody needs to be rebuked or corrected, the Lord will use that person just like the Lord used Paul to rebuke Peter. Why did why... everything that he did and said was of Christ? Does that mean it couldn't have been off? Paul's still a human at the end of the day. Okay, thank you. So don't try to act like he's infallible. Okay, but he was corrected though, just like Peter was, correct? Okay. Do you know what he was corrected on? Yeah, Peter was not eating with the Gentiles. No, do you know what Paul was corrected on? Well, I would have to read this text again. So if you want to, if you want to tell me what he was corrected on, go ahead. So you believe that physical circumcision of the flesh is no longer required, right? I mean, as far as cleanliness and all the other stuff is concerned, I mean, but no, it's not required to receive the kingdom. No, it's the blood of Christ. Okay, so you can break the least of the commandments and still make it to heaven, is what you saying. I didn't say that. What I said is in Hebrews, it is described that we hold the commandments in our heart through the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit inside of us allows us to conduct the commandments, to conduct the fruits, to... What is, so, so is the law done away with, yes or no? The law is not done away with because the law is now in us through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the law is in you. Do you still break it or do you keep it? I keep it to the best of my ability. You keep the law, so you keep the dietary laws. I do not keep the dietary laws, but I don't eat pork. So that's what, what you... So the law is not done away with. You say you keep it, but you break it, so you don't keep it. Which one is it? The dietary law has nothing to do. The only thing the only thing Jesus Christ added was to love one another as we have as he has loved us. And two, that you shouldn't look at a woman because then you would have just done the same thing. You would have committed adultery with her. That's the so two there's only two. There's only two laws that you have to follow to make it to heaven. I didn't say that. I said he added. He added. In other words, he made it what even more. Add, wait, he, what did he add? He added two commandments? No, That's no. I asked. First of all, the Ten Commandments no. say don't covet your neighbor's wife. And Leviticus 19 says to love your neighbor. So he didn't add anything. I'm yeah, asking, what, law what, done away, what, what law do you keep? Okay, the, it's, it's not a law, it's the commandments we keep. We, no one could keep 613 laws. Can that's you do all things through Christ Jesus? Say that one more time. Can you do all things through Christ Jesus? Yes, that's what the Bible says. Okay, so can you keep the 613 laws? That's what Jesus Christ came for, to fulfill the 613 laws. We abide now by the commandments. Now, listen. There's a, law, there's a law that says when you sin, you have to make animal sacrifice. Did he fulfill that law? He was the sacrifice. He okay. was the he was, he was the lamb. What about the law when a woman's on her peer, uh, her menstrual cycle, her pur purification cycle after birth, and she has to give an animal sacrifice? Did if you he, have the Holy Spirit. Did, he keep, that one? did yeah. he keep that one? You going to let me talk? Yeah. Okay. It's common sense, right? Let's say even before Jesus came. It's just common sense. You don't touch a woman while she's having her period. It's nasty, one. And two is you can't procreate that way. And on top of that, yes, at that time it was against the law, but because of the stubbornness and the stiff neckness of Israel, okay, they needed tablets to conduct themselves. So the, the tablets were to show them how sinful they were. It wasn't, it wasn't, okay? Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna ask two questions and I hope we can close out with this. You said Jesus Christ kept the 613 laws. I want to know, so Jesus Christ had people in slavery? No. Well, there's a law, Leviticus 25 and 44 says, both thy bondmen and thy bondmaids, which thou shalt have, shall be of the heathen round about you. Of them shall you buy and uh, buy bondmen and bondmaids. So he didn't keep that law? Well, there was, there, was, there was a phrase that comes to mind that he did say, that he no longer calls us slaves, but friends. So yes, if, if you want to take that text. So this is talking about chattel slavery of heathens. Did Christ keep that law? Yes or no? Christ didn't Christ didn't come for that though. But you said he kept all the 613 laws. According to the word, yeah. He kept all the laws. That's why man, that's why man needed a savior. Okay. So in Deuteronomy 23, uh if a if a heathen Ammonite or Moabite wanted to, wanted to enter the congregation during the life of Christ, would he would have let them? Rephrase your question. What do you mean by that? Okay, so in the time Jesus was on earth, uh -huh. if an Ammonite or a Moabite wanted to join the congregation, would Jesus Christ would have let them? Everyone followed him, but no, his disciples was uh, specifically Israelites. Not not disciples. I mean, amongst the congregation, meaning like to congregate to congregate around the temple. Would Jesus Christ allow an Ammonite or a Moabite to do that?
I don't know. I can't really answer that question. Um, it does. And there's no text that, that shows that. There's no text that shows. There's no text that shows that he was against that. Okay. Do you think it's racist to discriminate from other races uh, joining or entering your congregation, like the congregation, like your church congregation? Would it be racist if you guys prohibited or excluded other races? Absolutely. Okay. So in Deuteronomy 23. In verse three, it says an Ammonite or a Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So is that racist? You talk, you're talking about at that time, that specific time where Moses, where Moses was the leader of Israel. Okay. Where he was taking them out, out of the wilderness. Okay. You're, sp you're, sp you're speaking on a different timeline. Okay. So you know, at that time, no. no. Oh, so, so at this time, so at a time it was racist. Yeah. At a time there was, there was segregation between, between, uh, okay. of Noah's children, obviously. Okay. right? So is God racist or was God racist? No, God is not racist. It's those people were evil. Okay. What did the, okay. So it says, even to their 10th generation, shall they not enter the Lord, enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Meaning Ammonites and Moabites that will be born 500 years later, who never even did nothing. They can't enter to the congregation. So you can't use that. So okay. my question is, is, is if you say it's racist for your congregation to do it, how is this not racist? And God is prescribing it. First of all, the Bible says who could understand the mind of God? That's one thing. We're not God. We're not in a place to even position ourselves. Now, for this for this understanding, if you really want to get into Ammonites and Moabites, I mean, King David's uh, great great grandmother, Ruth, had her own book. I mean, it could have been it could have been the book of. Uh, uh, um, Actually, when you look at the ancient manuscripts, Ruth is a part of Judges and also she did not write it. It's a story about King David's grandmother. That's the one. For right. two, it has nothing to do with coming and congregating amongst the temple. I'm not saying that they can't live among Israel. I'm saying they can't enter the congregation, which is congregating among the temple. You said that was racist. So my question initially was, if Jesus, when Jesus Christ was on earth, if an Ammonite or a Moabite would have tried to enter the congregation, would Jesus Christ would have kept this law or would he would have broke this law? He would have kept it if it was necessary, yes. Okay, so Jesus Christ would have discriminated and not allowed certain ethnicities to enter. But he did do that with the Canaanite women. You heard, you you, you made the, you made the text earlier. That, no, that wasn't among the temple. That was just her trying to basically get a crumb. It's, so you, you do agree. So you agree that Jesus Christ would have been discriminatory towards other races. First of all, d discriminatory and versus evil are two different, it's two different really um, subjects because- The word evil didn't come out of my mouth. So you you you're, you're kind of acting a little bit like a like a like a what prosecutor when we're trying to get to speak. <laughs> I, I know it's your show, but I'm just saying. So, let me so answer you, it. Said, you said that Jesus you Christ got 613 laws. Here's one of the 16 that he cannot let an Ammonite or Moabite, two different races, join the congregation of Israel. I can't. I can't. I can't hear you. But what I'm saying is, I don't know. He can still hear me. Okay. <laughs> 